Bestie, they always come back. If you're sitting there being like, Laura, there's no way in hell this dude's gonna come back to me at any point in time, you're wrong. You're wrong. Dude, let me just tell you, I broke into my ex's apartment and this dude still texted me one day. It took a while, but he texted me. They always come back. And you know why? Because they realize how good they had it. But of course, we should ignore all the possible reasons they may have come back and leave it to the delusional machinations of your own mind. Not forgetting, of course, why they may have possibly left in the first place. The better question then becomes whether they came back to stay or whether they left soon after they got what they actually wanted. Be selfish. Know your worth. Demand what it is that you deserve. Be fucking ruthless and selfish. You don't owe anybody anything ever. So stop being so giving and good, hoping to get it back. Because you won't. <laughs> 10 ways you say the n-word without saying the n-word. If you use any of these terms or phrases in reference to black people, you are just as racist as the person that actually uses the n-word. Here are the words. Thug. Ghetto. Welfare queen. Lazy. Race baiter, race grifter, threatening, angry, dangerous. Or you say that we're playing the victim or we are a diversity hire. What you actually mean to say is the n-word. You know, I have to ask, doesn't it get exhausting playing victim every chance you get? Most of these words are simply descriptive words. If you're angry, you're angry. If you're dangerous, you're dangerous. At this rate, I could simply just say hi and you would be offended. This would have been a very interesting topic of discussion until I realized she was just trying to sell a course. You can unlearn all the racist crap you've been taught and reject white supremacist ideologies that you've believed for your entire life. Now, if you're ready to do that and start becoming a part of the solution instead of a part of the problem, go to that link on my profile, sign up for my webinar replay, or do my five day challenge because it's time to do better. Do you know when guys are like, sit on my face? Like, what does that even mean? Like, I'm pear shaped. If I actually sat on your face, I'd break your nose, Steve. Like, the actual act of sitting on a guy's face, you have to pretend you're at Coachella in a porta potty and you can't actually sit down because bad things will happen. You will suffocate him with your labia. And then while you're sitting on his face, you're just like staring at his wall questioning every decision you've made in your life and wondering how you ended up at a studio apartment in Bushwick with no headboard with a guy named Riley. Now, if you have or are surrounded by any sense of normalcy, you're probably sitting there wondering, like me, what drives a grown ass woman to TikTok to talk about sitting on a guy's face, having a pear shaped ass and breaking his nose. We can only attribute this madness to the rise in narcissists and victims. And I think this lady says it best. There are many narcissists right now on this platform who claim that they're victims of narcissistic abuse and have been in a toxic relationship that they've managed to break free from. As a psychotherapist who specializes in healing from trauma, I can see narcissists very, very clearly. And I'm going to teach you how to spot the difference between a victim that's telling their story and a narcissist who's going about a smear campaign. Now, the first thing I want you to be aware about a victim who's been in a narcissistic relationship is when that relationship ends, they're going to be experiencing a lot of trauma and a lot of pain, and they're going to need time and space away from the narcissist, normally away from social media, so that they can process what they've been through. They need to fully understand what happened in that relationship so that they can heal and they can start to move on. The last thing a victim's going to want to do is go on social media and talk about a toxic relationship that they can't even quite understand themselves. Plus, they're gonna have a lot of low self-esteem and low confidence, so they're gonna worry about what people are gonna think of them. So putting themselves out there is a big deal for a, vic or for a victim. Often, if they're gonna talk about their relationship that they've been in, we're talking months, if not years, once that relationship has ended. Now, a narcissist, when they wanna tell their story, AKA smear campaign, the first key difference is that they will name and shame that person. 
they will openly tell the world who that person is that apparently abused them, who is actually their victim. Because what they're looking to do is get people on their side who are then going to attack that victim. And also it gets them more attention. You know, people were going to feel sorry for them, which is what they want. They want people to be on their side so that they can appear to be the more powerful person. Because for them, it's all about power and control. Also, they will talk about that relationship as if it's something to be proud of. It's not something that's really hurt them. It's not something that they struggle to talk about. They can very confidently and openly talk about it and confidently say that person's name in the same breath. This is not a victim talking about an abusive relationship. This is a narcissist who's committing a smear campaign. Now, if you're a victim and this relates to you, you have permission to duet this video. Now agree or disagree? I'm rather curious on what you think. So let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you on the next one.